So here I am, I've just come down to check the young cattle, they're just behind me, all looking quite healthy. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at something that's not healthy here. I'm going to look at the elm trees uh, and I just thought I'd have a little chat about Dutch elm disease on the farm because it is something that um, has been around for a while but every now and then comes back in waves and I've noticed that the Dutch elm disease is coming back on this farm after a sort of probably absence of 10 years or something. Anyway, we'll have a look at the cattle and then we'll look at some Dutch elm disease. Okay, so these are the young stock, our in-calf heifers or, or heifers that are growing up. There are a few dry cows out here. Let's have a look. There's a dry cow there, look. So these are the, these are, would have been calves. Anything with yellow band on means it's dry. You see the yellow bands on the tail there. We put that on as a double tape just to t make sure we don't mix it up with any other cows. Last thing you want to do is that to get in with the herd and milk it. So uh, I'll just check these round. Main thing I'm looking for, lameness. Any swellings in the udder. Look, it's got a few warts on it. Uh, but also, um, any potential bad eyes from the flies, although these have been treated with spot on, so they shouldn't be too bad. Right, well they seem okay, I'll have another look in a bit. It's the elm trees we've come to look at there, we're going to have a look at that. Okay, so I've just come out and behind me are some elm trees and one of them is definitely dying uh, from Dutch elm disease. It's something that uh, I grew up as a boy. My dad was always cutting down dead elm trees in the early 70s when the first sort of wave of Dutch elm disease come in, came into the country. I think it was carried by a beetle. It's a fungal infection. The tree's got no resistance to it and basically it wipes out the elm tree. And what happens is every now and then they grow from suckers and although it seems to kill the mature trees, the, the hedgerow sort of suckers seem to survive. But if you leave them to grow up into a tree, like the ones behind me, they eventually get Dutch elm disease and die. Now what's interesting is, it seems to come in waves and probably about 10-15 years ago there was a wave of Dutch elm disease came round our farm, wiped out all the elms and they all died. Now over that time they've regenerated again and they've done this, it's doing the same this year. I'm noticing all around the area the Dutch elm disease is back. Uh, the trees get to about 15, well maybe higher. 20, 30 foot high and then that's it, game over for the tree. And, and that's what's happened behind. We'll have a closer look at it in a minute. But it is quite sad because the reality is I don't think I'll ever see a fully grown elm tree in my life. Because it just, they, unless we can get a genetically modified elm tree and release it into the wild, which I don't think at the moment is uh, either allowed or viable, um, we can't stop this Dutch elm disease. You can do all you like, you can leave them on the farm, but they just get it every time. Uh, and certainly the trees in this country are under attack. We've got sudden ash death, uh, sorry, we've got ash dieback and then there's sudden oak death. Um, certainly it's kind of like changing the landscape because, you know, this landscape and this certainly in this area would have been all mature um, elm trees when I was a kid and, that, and that's all gone. Uh, it's quite interesting, it's kind of a regional tree to this area for sure. If you go around the country you see different regional trees. Silver birch seems to be in certain areas, you never see a silver birch in this area. Um, if any of you are watching from around the world or, or in parts of the country, I'd know, like to know what your regional tree is, what you think is your regional tree, you know, let me know. Anyway, we'll go and have a look, it's up there, and we'll see what we can see at the end as well, a bit, but I'll try and find another dead one. So here's a classic example of, of one of the elm trees that's dying. Uh, just while I'm stood here, the, sn the leaves are coming down like snowflakes. Look, it's all autumnal. And, uh, the leaves are on the floor and I just literally stood here and I saw, look, I can see one coming down now in the air. There it is. So they're coming off the tree, so the tree is actually dying. Uh, now it's quite sad really to see that go because it, it's as high as it will ever get. That will be firewood in a few years time. Um, and so that one, they go through stages. So this one is obviously just past the initial death stage and the, the leaves are coming off. We look over here, this one's not so advanced, I'll go around and have a look at that one. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in on this one. And you can just see that it's actually starting to die on the top. The branches, have, the leaves have died, they've gone brown. They haven't, they haven't gone yellow like the other one, but the rest of the tree will go yellow, I'm sure. And that will end up being a sort of skeletal tree eventually, similar to the other one. Um, and then you end up with a dead tree in the hedge. We'll have a look up further up the lane where there is actually a dead elm. 
Okay, so I've come back around this side of the sewer pumping station and get a better look at this tree. Um, and it's, they're all this the same, takes the top out first of all, you can see the brown leaves up there. Those cattle aren't happy because I've been running around with them. You can see the, the centre of the tree is going and the leaves are all brown and crispy. And not very easy to get to the top of a tree to look at it, is it? But uh, you can see that will be dead within a few months, which is a real shame. And further up this lovely little lane, there is a dead one I noticed when I was coming down. But I can see another, look, there's another one dying. So top of this one looks healthy. Just to the right of it, I don't know if I can zoom in very well. I can just see some brown leaves poking through the top there. Can you see that? I'm on full digital zoom, so it's not as clear as it could be. But you can just see, make out some brown bits that are just, just showing that that elm there is just about to go as well. Um, and it's just the case that they're all next to each other. Look, there's that one I was looking at earlier with the yellow leaves. They're all in a line. They're all going to go. This clump is all going to go within a few weeks or months. Let's have a look at the dead one at the top then anyway. I love this little lane down here. It's a beautiful little place to be. Very mellow. Uh, let's see if I can spot the dead elm. Where is it? I spotted it on the way down but I thought we'd look at one that was still alive before we got to the dead zone. And of course now I'm here I can't actually see it. I know it's here. Okay, well this is the end of the trees on the left hand side where it is. Let's get out and have a look. Okay, not very easy to get to. So I'm gonna climb. Ooh. Ooh, health and safety, forget that. Right, climbing through the hedge here to find myself a dead elm tree. Because realistically, not many have died yet, but this one is completely gone. In fact, there's a branch off, off one here. It's probably snapped off because it's died. Um, but you can see the skeleton there. Look at it, the dead tree of an elm, and next to it is one that is dying. Look, it's dead at the top, it's still got leaves at the bottom. Uh, and what happens is, so they die like this, completely dead. Um, and it hasn't happened yet, but the bark will start peeling off and you'll probably see the outline of the burrows of the beetle in it that brings the disease with it. So anyway, that's a dead elm. In fact, uh, this one's just, the bark's just starting to go um, here. And in fact, you can actually make out, I don't know whether you can see that, just the lines of the, the beetle on that little bit of explo exposed timber there. Look, can you see? There it is. I think that's part of the problem, although if you want to Google that, you'll find more details. Um, so there you go, Dutch elm disease is on the farm. Yeah, and we might have a little catch up maybe later in the year when we see how, how bad it's actually got. Right, I've got to try and make my way back out of here without breaking my neck. So I'm going to turn the camera off, say bye bye, hopefully I don't break my leg. Well, I made it out of there okay, but I walked by the blindly obvious one. There's one just here that is actually gone over, it's died and gone over, and it barks off it already. Just behind me, look. There it is leaning over. What happens? That's exactly what will happen to all these ones that are dying. They'll they'll stay up there for a while, they'll get weak at the roots when they rot out and the whole thing a kill over like that. So I should have some nice firewood soon.